my horrific weather. A teenage boy was spending some time at home the previous night to Halloween. What had happened, or was due to happen, on Halloween, the very next day, would be to change his life forever. He had a strange relationship with his parents, where he thought that he wasn't loved and he wasn't cared. But unfortunately, that was nothing of the sort, and it was by far from the very truth. He was loved, but it took for something horrific to happen for him to realize. After an argument with his parents, with him wanting not to not to go to school, his parents wanted more for him. They were enforcing this on him. They were talking, really, really, really trying to get him back on the right road. He had other ideas. He wanted to go out with his mates. And he started to get up in his father's face. Unfortunately, things were said which were never, ever to be resolved. His parents said some things, and the boys certainly said some horrific things. That night they were all due to go to a, a relative's house, his grandparents. He ran to his room and slammed the door and started texting on his phone. His parents thought that they would leave him, so then they left to his grandparents. Little did that boy know that he was going to be left all on his own. Not just for that evening, but for forever. Nobody ever knew what happened that night to his parents, but they never, ever returned. The car was never found, and literally letters would roll in and roll in the several few days after, and nobody knew what happened. But for the boy, the house began to take on its own characteristics. The first night he thought that he stayed at his grandparents, and he kept to his stance, and he did not call his grandparents. Halloween came, and he thought, with the house being with food in, and it was well looked after from his mother, he didn't have to bother. What was worrying him was he thought that his parents wouldn't go this far, and absolutely, they idolised him, they would not. What was then to happen on Halloween was he was to try and call his grandparents. He missed his mum. He missed his dad. No answer. That very night, after, when he'd finished school, that day, he came home and expected to see his parents with open arms. The house was exactly how it was left. But as he walked back through the house, the house outside seemed to be in a shadow. It was an older house, so he thought possibly with the weather and with things which had been going on in his mind, it could have been something in his head. But he swore he saw a shadow over the house. As time went on after school, he prepared himself a ready meal. He poured himself a glass of milk and sat to the dining room table, on his own, all alone, with a pumpkin sat in front of him. He finished his meal and sat there in silence, wondering when he would see his parents next. He thought to himself he would possibly do something that evening. He decided to get snacks, a whole glass of fizzy drink, over and over and over. He must have drunk about three litres watching scary movies. When the time hit nine o'clock Halloween when there was a knock on the door, he ran to the door and looked through the spy hole. He'd expected to see his parents. No call. Nothing from his grandparents, his parents. And he even thought that it was strange that he didn't receive anything from his mother, being actually how much she really did very much love him. He started to realise that the feelings were there and actually it was him. And that they only wanted the very best for him. Stood at this door thinking all of that in seconds. 
he pulled his head away from the spy hole, realising it was only trick-or-treaters. And his back slumped against the door, and he began to fall to the floor in wonder of when he would see them again. And as he went to walk away, the lights all went out, and he heard a cracking of glass. He thought, being an old house, it was a light bulb which had gone. Thought no more of it. Where his father had shown him the fuse box, just right by the door, he opened the cupboard and flicked the switch, which his father had showed him. The light came back on. But as he went into his lounge to revisit his film, he heard a sound in his ear. A passing of air. He thought no more of it. The boy went into his lounge, where he then took his seat and carried on watching his film. A door slammed. He then began to panic. No parents, no one around. He began to really fear what was happening. And as he went to leave the room, he began to feel cold, almost as though something had happened, or almost in a presence. As he opened the door, what he seen was something sheerly only in his mind. He opened the door and the house was no more. It was a cliff's edge, surely an image which posed so many thoughts in his head. He began to scrabble at his eyes, wondering what on earth had happened, or if something was mentally wrong with him. The house was no more. He looked back into the lounge, with this Halloween old traditional film still playing, and he could see everything in his life in that room. But yet, he wanted it no more. He wanted more. He opened the door back up, after slamming it shut, not realising what was going on. Again, the house was no more. It was a cliff's edge. At the bottom, sea crashing against the cliffs, looking far out as water could see. But on a dark and scary night, just towards the edge, he seen a hilltop. And on that hilltop was his parents. All of a sudden, his father grew his hand towards where he was standing and pointed him. He thought, why would he not listen to his parents? After all, he wished he had it done, first of all. His parents, he would follow with his heart's content. After, he took a leap of faith and thought, this is my home, not a cliff's edge, with nothing to fear. He pulled one foot out and went to step down, thinking he would fall on the floor. He fell forward and forward, and the wind blew through him, cold as a thousand daggers shot through him, in the feeling of what felt like ice. He hit no water, but just pure nothingness. The boy had wondered, as he was falling, what was happening? The boy hit the ground and instantly everything was sheer nothing and blackness. He felt pain and sorrow and emptiness. And there he would stand. On this Halloween night he had took a leap and it was him who was left with nothing and him who was left feeling like he had betrayed his family, he'd betrayed himself through not listening to his parents, not listening and cherishing his family. His life was sheerly over, he thought. The thing was, what was about to happen was about to shock him forever and change his whole perspective. He felt so empty and so sad. He must have gradually drifted away. Five, four, three, two, one. (sighs) 
The numbers counting backwards was his alarm clock in his room. He had dreamt the whole thing apart from the argument. When he ran up to his room, he fell asleep on his bed. And what had happened was a nightmare, which he woke up. The wind blowing on his ear, in his face, was how his father used to play tricks on him, pretending it was a ghost. A joke between them. What he woke was this morning, before his father was due to walk to work, was he decided to wake him up and apologise for what he had said. His son flung his arms in the air, crying in tears, and said, I'm so, so sorry. He had realised that all was a nightmare. And then on, his life was to change forever. Because then he valued everything from his family, everything what his parents had done, and how special those people closest to us are. Halloween can do incredible things. Yes, scary. Yes, frightening, but also make us think and also bring us closer. Have a great Halloween. Thank you very much for watching my clip. I have enjoyed it as ever, but something special about Halloween just makes me click. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, we will see you then. Bye-bye now.